Okay, I'm sure the lighting is about to look really funky, but whatever. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about my favorite trailing house plants that are in my collection as of April 2022. And now that I'm looking at what I have in front of me, I'm realizing that pretty much all of my collection for the most part is trailing plants, which is fine. It's totally fine. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. These are not in order of my favorite to least favorite. These are just in whatever order I'm grabbing them in. Number one is going to be this Hoya Crimson Queen. Mine's not very full and traily right now, which is totally fine. She is working on some new leaves finally after like having her for almost a year now. We're finally seeing some growth get put out, but the reason why the Hoya Crimson Queen is one of my favorite trailing plants is because of Wild Ferns Hoya Crimson Queen. Hers is wild. Like I don't really get jealous of other people's plants, but like that one, like I'm pretty jealous of. I still love this one. I'm not saying that like I don't love mine because mine doesn't look like hers. We're in this together and until we are no longer fit for each other, we will we will continue our journey, but I'm just really excited for this one to get to be that full because oh my god it is so beautiful like out of this world beautiful the care is really simple on a hoya and i'm finding that like with most hoya it's pretty simple at least the hoya that i've come into contact with i just water when this when she needs water i'm also finding that they do pretty well in terracotta pots because they are i believe they're semi succulents i think that's actually a thing and with semi-succulents, they're like succulents, so they can tolerate drought as well as they can do a little bit better if they're getting water consistently. Not like once a month, but like maybe once every 10 days or whatever. My watering schedule ends up being like around once a week, which I know some people are gonna hear that and go, <gasps> but it works for me. It may not work for someone else, but in my environment, in my home, in DFW, Texas, in zone eight, in my probably not humid house, once a week watering works just fine for me. Next on my list is this beautiful star of the show, Hoya Linearis, that looks like she needs a haircut, but we love her anyway. This one to me is so amazing and so different because the foliage is so different than what you would expect a Hoya to be. And honestly, I had no idea that Hoya would be so fuzzy, but like, I don't know if this will show, but can you see how fuzzy this is? I may need to get like a macro lens or something and do like a close up of it. And I'm also noticing that within the, like the month that I've had it, like she's growing. She's really going for it. So this one to me, I love plants that are low effort, high yield, and this one to me seems to be low effort, high yield. Just have it in some well-draining soil and soil that has a lot of nutrients in it and can support fungal growth with mycorrhizae, which is this. I have it in a mix of fox farm soil with some pine bark and whatever rock I could find at the nursery because I couldn't find pumice. And we seem to be really happy. We seem to be really enjoying it. I cannot believe that I found this freaking gorgeous plant for 30 freaking dollars. Hoya Linearis seems to be a little bit more common than it was even like three months ago because I've gone into two plant shops slash nurseries within the last, you know, two to three weeks and have seen Hoya Linearis in the shelves. I don't know if that's just they're becoming more available or the market value has gone down. I don't know what it is, but they are a little bit more widely available now, which is very exciting. So I'm still shocked that I found it for $30 and it's a pretty full plant in my opinion. Next on my list is going to be this wonderful Hoya Polyneura, which I purchased on Etsy from Emily's Greenhouse. And look at that. We have some new growth coming in. So this one to me is a very unique, beautiful grower from what I've seen from full mature plants. I love that the leaves don't change. So they're forever going to be this beautiful fishtail shape. They're forever going to be nice and veiny and there's so much contrast in between them. Truly, this is a beautiful plant. Again, 
easy to take care of in my experience in the like I guess we're coming up on four months now of having it three four I don't understand math anyway this one is just super easy to take care of it just seems like it's super happy and I love the look of a full polyneura so I'm gonna let it give me like two or three more leaves nodes of leaves or whatever because Hoya when they grow they give out at least two leaves per node so I'm going to let it give me two more sets or three more sets of leaves and then I'll probably propagate from there. But y'all, man, beautiful. Seriously, so beautiful. I am so happy that I finally took the plunge and purchased this plant because it's going to look beautiful once it's fuller and it's trailing and it's hanging over the side of a shelf and commanding attention. We love a queen. That commands attention. Next on my list of favorite trailing plants that I have is this Hoya pubicalix, which has gone absolutely bonkers and is just truly growing like a weed. Like this, probably the length of my leg. And granted my legs aren't that long, but when a vine is as long as my leg, like that's pretty, that's pretty substantial. This one, again, it's just super easy to take care of. And once you get it like really growing, the foliage just spilling over the side is absolutely beautiful. I do wish that it would put out leaves along the runner here more often just because it kind of looks funky to see this very long runner just kind of hanging out and then this fella over here too. I do know that that's how Hoya grow. They put off runners and then they fill in the leaves later. One thing I do love about this plant is the lance shaped leaves. And I also love the splash is seriously so unique. And it's just kind of one of those plants that it's just kind of like a showstopper. If you have all trailing plants and you have a what the fuck is that? I just think that this is a really unique and really beautiful plant and it is on the cheaper side so again if you're into just wanting something in your house to look nice the care is very simple the watering water whenever the soil is dry and see where this will go next up on my list is this very beautiful peperomia prostrata or string of turtles now again the leaf shape is just so unique and this is actually a very easy plant to take care of. I quite literally just leave it and forget it. It's blooming for me in multiple spots. This one being my favorite blooms right here. And what that means when it's blooming is that it means that it's happy. And it doesn't have as many blooms as it used to, but that's totally fine. I mean, I wasn't like trying to make it bloom or anything. This is such an easy plant to take care of. It's water when the soil is dry, give it light let it hang out in a terracotta pot because again much like the hoya this i believe is a semi-succulent and if a semi-succulent is a thing it can tolerate the drought but it will appreciate a little bit more water than your run-of-the-mill succulents this one has been incredibly easy this one is also another very beautiful statement piece and I am so happy to have this in my collection. It is just so stinking beautiful. I love how unique the leaves are. The veining is just so beautiful. Even the color of the green foliage on it is just so, so beautiful. And I think I even saw like when they're starting to come in, they're a little red, which is really interesting to me. I think, yeah, so here's a vine, right? They're kind of different. I don't know. I don't know where I saw red, but Again, very easy to take care of. They can tolerate standard household humidity, which I'm guessing mine's probably around like 40 or 50. It's probably a little bit higher right now just because of the season that we're in. And in Texas, this is where we get the majority of our rain. But yeah, very happy. Next on my list is going to be this very beautiful philodendron heteracium, not chordatum, or heartleaf philodendron if 
you prefer to use the common names, no shame. This one, I've taken quite a few cuttings of and I've given to friends and or I've given to some people who have started collecting plants and this is like, this is prolific. This really does root very quickly from what I've seen. I haven't really had a need to propagate it other than getting like the vines that are up top to match the same length as the vines on the bottom. But even then, this is just such an easy going, beautiful plant. And that's the theme with my plants I'm coming to find is that we like easy going with a little, little splash of needy and high maintenance. This one for me, extremely easy going. I love the shape of the leaves. I love the dark green foliage. I love that it just spills over. It's gonna wanna climb. And I don't want it to climb, I want it to trail. So it can do well trailing, it can also do very well climbing. This, I think this is one of those plants that will go either way. And again, it just hangs out at standard household humidity, which mine probably fluctuates during the year. It's a very rewarding plant and it's very beautiful. And I love getting to share this plant with friends, with family members, just because of how sentimental it is to me. Honestly, it would look really good if like you just had like a shelf and it just had all like trailing plants just hanging down. Next for my favorite trailing house plants is going to be the Skindapsis Pictus Silvery Anne. This to me is also another high yield of results for low effort. It's seriously so beautiful. The foliage is just so wonderful. The leaves feel so like satiny, which is why it's called a satin pothos. The leaves, the shape is beautiful. The texture of the leaves are beautiful. I love how it's velvety. I love how it's matte. I love how, you know, there's the dark green foliage and then there's the contrast of this like beautiful silver foliage. It just makes it so interesting. And then not only that, this is a very vocal plant. So when it wants water, the leaves will start to curl up a little bit. I really appreciate that about plants because I'm really bad at forgetting about their existence a lot of the times. This one reacting and letting me know, just it helps tremendously. Responsive plants, vocal plants, we love them, we stand them. This again is such a showstopper piece that I feel like every person should have one. The reason why I would like fell in love with this plant was I was actually watching, or no, I was on Instagram looking at Janae Daly. She has a YouTube channel. I'll try to link it down below if I remember. She had this plant or has this plant, I don't remember, in her bedroom and it was hanging from the ceiling and then it just trailed down to the floor and I honestly think there were like one or two vines trailing down to the floor but it was just so delicate and just so beautiful it's just so beautiful and so delicate to see like one or two vines just trailing down especially at such a long length from however tall she is or from wherever it was in her room at the time all the way down to the floor I'm gonna assume she's about five 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 six so I mean that's to give you an idea. Last but not least on my list is my beautiful string of hearts, which has grown some more since that repotting video that I posted. It has already started to grow and it's really, really loving its new home. I haven't had any leaves just like melt away on top and I'm trying to encourage some of the, le the like shorter strands to kind of go back. So that way I can fill it out a little bit up top because again, we're still a little bald, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. But this plant, I love the heart-shaped leaves. Seriously, I, I think I just love heart-shaped leaves. But this one is just so beautiful. And again, low effort, high yield in results. Are we noticing a theme here? This one, again, I feel like is a really good starter plant for somebody who's looking into trailing plants or plants for the first time or somebody who may just want to experiment outside of, you know, a pothos or a heartleaf philodendron. I just think that the leaves are just so unique. It really is just so beautiful. And I 
have this one in very similar conditions. It's in a nice chunky potting mix with some Mycorrhizae A inoculants in it. I'll leave a link down to the soil that I use below. Again, it has pine bark in it and whatever rock was at the nursery that I purchased. We're loving life over here. We really are loving life over here. I think I am gonna move it though to my south window that I am pointing at right now that I'm sitting in front of and put some hooks and some macrame hangers up there so that way maybe it'll encourage a little bit more growth. I have to hang a curtain rod first and then hang some curtains before I do that because I don't want the curtain rod, which is more important than the plants, arguably, to get caught on the plants or whatever. So I'll have to figure that out first and then we'll figure out the plants. But honestly, it's so, so beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, again, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. All of this means so much more to me than I think anyone would ever realize because as of right now, I have about 40 subscribers and it's wild to me that 40 people in this world, even if they are like my neighbors or people that I've met on Discord or people that I went to school with, it is wild to me that anyone cares about anything that I have to say. So thank you so much for joining my community and if you want to see some more planty content, I'm going to leave my Instagram handle here so that way you can come join the fun over there and I will see you guys next time. Bye. What even is